Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you all. All of the views, likes, and comments do not go unnoticed. I really appreciate you all. You're helping me to discover more about myself as we learn together. And with that said, today, this video might be a little bit longer, but it's well needed. Um, I was speaking to a friend of mine. She is also an artist and we often kind of go back and forth about where we are mentally as it relates to the pursuit of satisfaction within our art and our creation. And mental health is not something that is prioritized when it comes to artistry. I think people just assume that because you are expressing yourself creatively, you must have you know, you must have the best mental health or you must be doing way better than somebody in a suit and tie in corporate America. And it's it's not true. It's definitely a stigma um, amongst people to assume that mental health is one size and it only applies to people who are working robotically. No. Keeping up with your mental health applies to people who are working creatively. It applies to stay-at-home moms. It applies to people working in corporate America. It applies to people who have hybrid careers. Keeping up with your mental health is just as important as keeping up with your physical health. If you have a mind, you have mental health that you need to sustain. And I truly believe that mental health is a source of wealth and happiness. So, with that said, I wanted to take out time from my day to give you all about 20 ways to improve your mental health. Now, if you have not already, please like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know you're here. Let me know you're listening. Let me know you are keeping up with what I'm doing. It helps the YouTube algorithm when you do such things, and I would really appreciate it. Now, let's get into it. So 20 ways to improve your mental health. Number one is to stretch. This one is something that I definitely know that I can slack on sometimes because sometimes, let's be honest, I'm in a rush, especially um, I like to stretch in the morning before I even start my day, before I walk my dog, before I even get get going. Um, and sometimes I just don't have time for that, but it really does uh, regulate your body when you stretch. So try to take time out of your day to stretch. That is a way to improve your mental health. Meditate. Meditation is so vast. I think that uh, when people hear the word meditate, they automatically come up with a specific image. And what meditation is, to me at least, is just sitting with yourself for a few moments, focusing on your breathing or focusing on white noise or brown noise, something that is steady, something that can center you. Because when you are struggling with your mental health or when you're feeling stressed or when you're feeling kind of off balance, what can happen is you can get into kind of like a a roller coaster of emotions and what meditation does is kind of put you right at that steady level so that you can calm your nerves and that you can calm the discomfort and you can calm the ups and downs of the roller coaster ride that you feel like you're on. So the second way to improve your mental health is to meditate. The third way is to practice gratitude. I just spoke about this in the other um in my last video. I think I just spoke about it in my last video. Either way, uh, no, I didn't speak about it in my last video. I, I said it in my last uh, Instagram post today that taking a moment to say, I get to instead of I have to is super key in changing your verbiage to match that of gratitude and what happens when you are in gratitude you're looking at what you have versus what you don't have and that can vastly improve the direction your mental health is going in and it improves your mental diet which we'll talk about eventually because you know it's a really interesting um term to say mental diet i've never heard that growing up and there's a there's a uh, there's a library near me 
that um, the, the, the it, on the on the front of the building says mental hygiene, and I've I've never heard those two terms before. Just recently heard about mental diets. I was like, I love that because it really is a diet. You really have to manage those thoughts. Um, like you manage your food, like you manage your uh, relationships, like you manage your interactions. So practice gratitude. The fourth way is listening to podcasts. Um, for me, this has been a big thing. Uh, I just posted on my uh, on my blog um, the health benefits of actually listening to audiobooks. And for me, that includes podcasts because there's still uh, audio recounts. And it allows you to kind of strengthen your ability to multitask and it can help um, to improve your mental health as well. There are lots of uh, tips that people have used and there are lots of things that people have experienced that could help you in your journey as well. You know, so listening to podcasts can definitely help improve your mental health. Take a bubble bath is number five. I love bubble baths. I have not taken any recently because it's been really hot and muggy in New York. And when I get home, I just want to take a cold shower because it's just, (laughs) it won't be freezing cold because, you know, but it'll definitely be cooler. But uh, in the wintertime, in the cozier seasons, I love taking bubble baths. It just, it does something to my heart rate when I take a bubble bath. It just kind of just relax. And don't don't let me have jazz music on either because I'm, then I'm really in a whole different world. But anyway, if you're able to take a bubble bath, that can improve your mental health. Exercise for at least 30 minutes. That also helps. I am committed to uh, taking walks with my dog for at least 30 minutes. Um, so even if I'm not doing a uh, high intensity, um, exercise that gets it out of the way. And that, um, definitely helps me to prepare for my day, mentally prepare for my day and mentally prepare for, um, my week as well. And to go into situations with kind of that tension released, a lot of tension is released when you exercise, um, and walking is a part of that. So exercise for 30 minutes a day. And the next thing is to declutter your home. Ooh, this one, decluttering in, let me just say, let me pause and say that it is scientifically proven that your clutter says a lot about your mental health. So by decluttering your space, decluttering your Uh, your desk or your car or your office, wherever you find yourself sitting with yourself. By decluttering that space, you are giving room for yourself and for new things to grow as well. So decluttering your home is definitely key in improving your mental health. And the next thing is to spend time in nature. I said earlier about how I am committed to taking at least a 30 minute walk a day with, um, with my, with my dog. And, you know, we walk where it's quiet, where there are lots of trees, where there are lots of other animals or, you know, birds and just places where we can connect with nature. And I don't know about you, but when I look up at a tree that is just so much larger than I am, I see God in it. And I just, I just start to connect with the beauty of creation and how much of an architect and an artist that God is uh, to create such things without my input and without my, (laughs) without my say so, and just being able to look at it and enjoy it as if it were hanging on a wall. So spend time in it, spending time in nature definitely helps to improve your mental health. The next thing is similar to listening to podcasts and that's to listen to an audio book. Now I'll link the, um, the article in my description, um, that, tells you the immense health benefits of listening to audiobooks, but there are many, and there are many that you probably didn't even think of. Cause I know when I found out the health benefits, I didn't even know. I just thought I was, um, cutting time and being efficient by listening to audiobooks. but it turns out that listening to an audiobook can definitely improve your mental health. Um, another thing that is a favorite of mine is to watch your favorite movie. I mentioned, I think in my first video that 
um, sometimes watching my favorite movies can change my mood. And I, and I don't know how that sounds. It may sound crazy to some people. It may sound totally sane to others. But for me, um, watching my favorite movie, which is normally a movie centered around love or centered around triumph or centered around humor, definitely changes my mood. It also gives me a dose of nostalgia and nostalgia is everything to me like i love nostalgia there's something about seeing the world through the eyes of somebody who was here before me that gives me comfort you know and that's it yeah it's i don't know it sounds i don't know how that sounds but watching a favorite movie can definitely improve your mental health even if it's just a little bit you know baby steps are still steps and another step is something that I'm gonna do right now, and I hope that you'll do it with me, and it is take a few deep breaths. Yes. Ooh, I already feel so much more relaxed so much more ready to be and enjoy my being and enjoy everything that I am and everything that I'm going to be and everything that I've been. Yes, taking a few deep breaths can improve your mental health, even if it's just momentarily. Use that breath in your lungs. You have breath in your lungs for a reason. It's not just for survival. It's also for regulation. So take a few deep breaths and that can help improve your mental health. The next way is to cook your favorite meal. I did this yesterday. I had eaten all this meat during the week because I had um, about, I think, uh, four different shoots. Um, no, three, what is it? It's Thursday. Uh, three different shoots this week and normally the menu at these photo shoots are very savory but they're not always what I would cook and eat at home and so when I got home I was like I want something I want to crunch something I want to crunch something and I want to taste the water that is coming from that plant <laughs> I wanted to cook something and I wanted to cook something that was good for me. And I had no idea what I wanted to make because I was like, it's too late to defrost anything. I'm tired. I got to be back on set seven o'clock in the morning. Um, and, and it just, I didn't have the energy to um, think of a huge lavish meal, but I did find an adorable Moroccan um, quinoa salad um, on Pinterest that I can make fairly quickly and it was great and honestly when I first got into it first got into rinsing the quinoa and um you know getting into the whole process I was kind of a little bit I did feel a little drained but by the time I got to the end result I was like this is great I feel so centered I can't really explain how that happens maybe I'll look that up and describe that or I'll explain why cooking your favorite meal can improve your mental health but I definitely felt centered and I felt undrained even though I was making that meal at the end of my day making something that I really liked that was going to nourish my body somehow gave me kind of like a second wind and not not a second wind in the sense that I was ready to get out there and grind at that hour because it was pretty late at night but I definitely felt like, oh, I'm gonna sleep good tonight. It was one of those feelings. I was like, I'm gonna sleep really good tonight. So cooking your favorite meal can definitely improve your mental health. Another thing that can improve your mental health is listening to soothing music. You know, I mentioned earlier that when I take a bubble bath, I really like to pair that with jazz. Um, or for me, I'm a little bit weirder in the sense that, maybe that's not weird, but whatever. In the sense that like, I love, R&B and soul from the 1950s. Jazz, R&B and soul from the 1950s. I love it. I don't I can't explain why, but I love it. But when you listen to music that soothes you, it can definitely improve your mental health. Another thing that can improve your mental health is a light and aromatic candle. Now, 
I love candles, so I completely agree with this idea. I love it. I think that candles kind of give me a sense of white noise, but for my eyes, if that makes sense. I know that white noise is for the ears, but if there was such thing as white noise for the eyes, it would be candles for me. I love kind of watching that candle flicker and it just being, it's calming. I can't explain it, it's calming, but lighting an aromatic candle can definitely help improve your mental health. Um, you can also organize your wardrobe. Um, this goes right in line with decluttering your home. You know, sometimes having a disorganized wardrobe, my wardrobe is color coded to the best of my ability. Sometimes I get through laundry or I get through dry cleaning and I don't have time to color code everything, but having that organization in my wardrobe does make me feel a little less chaotic. And when you feel a little less chaotic, you can, uh, your, your mental health will improve. Another way is to do, um, five minute journaling. You know, I don't put a time limit on journaling, so um, I'm not sure how that would work for me, but I can say that journaling, even if it's for a short period of time, um, can really help to declutter your mind, which can improve your mental health. And that goes into the um, the next way to improve your mental health, which is to recite positive affirmations. Now, for me, I combine this with journaling because when I'm writing down, when I'm tailor making my affirmations, I am journaling. I'm thinking about the type of woman that I want to be. I'm thinking about the type of person that I want to show up as. I'm thinking about the type of human interactions I want to engage in. And then I write them down as an affirmation. And this can definitely improve your mental health. You know, this morning I had gotten back into affirmations because I have times, you know, life, life is ebbs, is, is, is what they say, they say life ebbs and flows. So I have times that I um, recite affirmations um, consistently. And then I have times where I'm like, oh, I don't have time for that right now. I need to, I wanna do something else. I wanna be, I wanna put this into practice or I want to do whatever. Um, but, you know, reciting positive affirmations can definitely improve your mental health. And not just positive affirmations, because that's a little too blanket for me, but affirmations that are true for you. You know, affirmations that resonate with you because they're not one size fit all, fits all. You know the type of person that you want to show up as and you need to affirm that person until that person shows up in your reality. Another way to improve your mental health is to dance like no one is watching. Now, I was thinking about this earlier. I was like, I miss ballet. I miss hip hop. I miss heels. Like I miss dancing. And I think that before, obviously before, oh, I'm so tired of talking about the pandemic, but it is true that before the pandemic, I was so open and willing to get into those group classes and dance it out. And now I feel a little bit, a little bit more hesitant, even though we are in a a uh, safer period of time it just doesn't feel as natural for me to just get up and go take a, a class um so that's my own personal journey with it and i'm working on it um and i can be very honest about that i'm working on um finding my groove as far as it as far as classes go um but no doubt when i was dancing i felt so much release in my body and I truly believe that dancing, even if it's for a few moments, even if you just have your song playing in the background while you're cleaning your house, or even if you're on the train and you can just, you, you hear something in the beat that makes your body move, do it, do it. Let your body experience that freedom because your body has a language as well and you control that speech. So dance like no one is watching and it will definitely be a way to improve your mental health and we have two more left and uh, the next one is to read a few pages of your book now i spoke about this in the article that i'm going to link in the description but i was always a writer i wasn't necessarily 
particularly passionate about reading. And it wasn't until recently, I would say in the past two to three years, that I became really infatuated with reading physical books. And I'll tell you why. I, I, I When I sit down with a physical book, um, I might not even be fully paying attention to it, but it's almost like a sense of meditation when I get a physical book and I'm sitting you know, at mm, a bookshop or a coffee shop or um, if I'm on set or I'm on a train or I'm, you know, at the park, it's almost like a way for me to be in the world, but not of the world. And I know that sounds so churchy and so like in the world, of the world, what is she talking about? But it, it's 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 a way to practice centering myself while also being around other things. Because the thing about meditation that um, is different from reading a book in public is it's more uh, it's more widely accepted, right? So if you if you pop out a book in public. Um, no one's going to sit there and say, why are you reading that book? But if you literally get down on all fours or you get down and, and um, you sit with, your, you know, with your legs crossed yoga style, yogi style uh, in the middle of the subway, you know, it, it's not going to be a very peace. It might not. Well, let me say it might not be a very peaceful experience for you, um, but they offer the same kind of focus it takes focus to meditate it takes focus to read especially if you're you pull out a physical book and you're reading in spaces where there are other people other things going on um so yeah reading a few pages of your book can definitely improve your mental focus which can improve your mental health and the very last thing the 20th way that can improve your mental health is to watch something that uplifts you. So we talked earlier about watching your favorite movie. Sometimes this can be a funny TikTok. And I will be the first to tell you that too much social media is not good for your mental health. I get that, I've experienced that. But there are some things like, I'll give you an example. Before TikTok was popular, uh, I mean, super popular to where like you can't you can't enjoy um, a text thread with anyone nowadays without them sending you a TikTok. I'm talking about before that time. Before it was popular, popular like that. I really enjoy there was this I cannot remember his name, but there was this TikTok um, user that I was like, this kid needs to be he needs to have his own show. He's the way he would explain things and his editing was just so funny and for a brief moment like i just laughed and the chaos that i was thinking about just went away so watching something that uplifts you doesn't necessarily have to be your favorite movie it could be your favorite show it could be funny videos short form or long form it could be um you know watching somebody dance i know for me um i love watching talented dancers love it love it love it because there is something so or talented musicians there is something so spiritually satisfying about non-verbal communication and when i watch uh, a musician play that is just so in their bag like you know they are really feeling it it does something to me that just uplifts me. Same thing when I watch somebody, um, somebody dance who is just, you could tell they're just really in their bag with whatever they're moving to, uh, whether they're doing choreography or not. So watching something, doesn't have to be a movie, but watching something that uplifts you is the 20th way that you can improve your mental health. Whew, that list was very long. That's probably my longest list to date, but I do believe that these ways will help you. It is my intention that these ways will help you. There are so many more. So 
my loves, don't be limited by just this list. There's so many more ways to improve your mental health that I did not list here. I will probably put this uh, list in the video so you can screenshot it. If I don't, do what resonates. Do what resonates. Listen to what resonates. So even if it's not doing something, specifically listen to what resonates because you have a smart body you have an intelligent system and it will always point at the next direction so breathe forgive yourself for literally everything and i'll talk to you soon if you like the song that's in the background it is called I'm Okay from my latest project, Black Current, which is available on all streaming platforms. I love you. Have a great week. I'm okay with